Hey, what's going on everybody? Matt with Lather Media. And in this video, we're in Key Shop and we're going to kind of go over how you turn a plain chain, you know, rubber tire into something that looks like it's actually, you know, drove around and picked up some, you know, dirt and some dust and, you know, been grooved out a little bit and so on and so forth. Kind of like what you see in front of you right here, even though I was an idiot and I just moved it. So, of course, now it's got to resample. Yay. But, figured I would do something productive, uh, you know, do this video while my other box is busy rendering, you know, animation. So, let's get started. And, and you know what? Can I... Uh, you know what, I'm just going to leave everything on, screw it. I should have used a much smaller model, you know, something that's not almost 5 million triangles, but I digress. It happens. I'm an idiot. Anyhow, what we're going to do here is basically, this right here is nothing more than a standard tire material that comes out of Keyshot. It's nothing special. It, you know, it, it's factory default and we're gonna manipulate that. It's a nice little starting point, if you will. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to open up our material graph. Now, I'm, I, I, I apologize. I am somewhat assuming that you know some of the principles behind how Keyshot works and also how to manipulate through the environment a little bit. Um, if that is not the case, and you need me to slow down or you need me to go over stuff like that, what have you, by all means, throw those in the comments below and I will do that on any future tutorials. So right now in the material graph, we have two nodes. We have a plastic and we have tire. So we have to populate that a little bit more. And first things first, I'm going to right click on this node, go ahead, duplicate, create a second one this one is going to, we're going to connect this output node into label. It's going to create a new label for us, and that's perfectly fine and dandy. It's what we want. So, before I go too far, uh, I'm actually just going to up these. It's going to be 0.18 on the roughness. Actually, no, it's going to be you know, 2.25 on both of these. Uh, just because of the scale, I don't want the tire to be shiny and it's going to be for a little part until I fine tune that, but that's not what you're here for. So now that we have our two plastic materials here, let's start branching this out. I'm gonna right click, go down here to texture and go down to noise texture. And I'm gonna plug that node into bump. I'll double click on the noise texture, hit C on the keyboard. That'll give you a preview. And we're going to change that to 1M on the scale just to see where we're at. Actually, that's not too bad. It's a little excessive, but again, for the sake of argument here, we're going to pretend like it's okay. Uh, Gonna bring up this to 0.5 and bring this up to like 1.26. Hit C again. Let that refresh a couple times. It's lightly giving me what I want, but I don't want to spend too much time on this and bore you guys to death, so I'm not gonna sit here and, and fine tune the texture. Uh, basically, you're just you're wanting like a, a very very subtle orange peel which is kind of how rubber looks if you it's got something to do with the molding process but that's what you want to go after um and that's how you do it is with this noise texture in the bump you just have to manipulate the scale the bump height and the magnitude to get what you want so from here i'm actually going to come over to my materials window click on texture or i should say my library window Click on texture and I'm gonna come down here to ground. Now I do have a couple custom folders in here. Literally it's just stuff that I've gotten off of um, 
uh, textures.com. I keep them in one location. It makes things a little bit simpler for me. Uh, you could do however you wish. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag one of these you know, soil materials out here. Or soil textures, I should say. This one's kind of a, a muddy soil. And I'm actually going to take this node and plug it into diffuse for plastic number two. Now, as you can see, it gives us a real thick, muddy bleh, uh, look, which is actually not too bad. I mean, we're basically just going to, it looks like somebody has gone mud bogging. Not bad. Not exactly what we want, but close. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull that up, right click on this, duplicate it. And we're just going to plug the same texture into bump, but I'm going to keep it separate. Uh, mainly because I don't know why just because um, I'm gonna desync that because I don't want it manipulating this other uh, this other texture here uh, bump height I'm going to come back and play with that later again I highly doubt you guys want to sit here and watch me do this um, so one of the things that we have to do here Actually, drag that over here. Spin this around a little bit. Now, what we want is we want this this edge uh, where the muddy material is only applied to the top, you know, the contact surface, but the sidewall itself is relatively clean. Uh, so, in order to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to right click, go into textures, and click on color gradient. Actually, I'm going to pull these back a little bit. I'm a neat freak when it comes to organizing things. I apologize. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to, for the time being, we're going to plug this color gradient into opacity. And then double click on color grade. Hit C on the keyboard. And as you can see, it's bright white and that's it. And there's no color whatsoever. We gotta modify that a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just flip these around. So black is on the left, white is on the right. And we're gonna keep these relatively close together. Uh, so about here or so. Now, as you can see, now it's completely black. It was completely white, now it's completely black. Well, there's a few other things that we have to do. So I'm going to move this over here off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and change the gradient type from planar to cylindrical. Yeah, now we're back to white again. we got to modify that some more. So I'm going to come up here to move texture. As you can see, our texture is all the way out in BFE. It's actually in the uh, coal section of these... This is a battery hauler, uh, underground mining equipment, by the way. Yeah, let's see here, let's pull this over here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, you gotta play with things in order to get them to come out the way you want, right? Exactly. So as you can see, it's got this banding thing going on. It's not quite looking right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start off with, I'm going to click, and then hold shift, and rotate this axis. Now that's giving me closer to what I want here. So let's center this gradient area up a little bit. All right. Uh, go up a little bit. All right, you know what? Hit green check mark. Now, if you wanted to know what that does, we'll go ahead and hit C again. The black area is 100% transparent. The white area is 100% you know, on or 0% transparent, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, if you're kind of uh, visualizing like a Photoshop, um, black would be transparency or opacity set to zero, and white is set to 100%, if that makes any sense. So 
from here what we're going to do is you can see I mean we have this small band of clean around the hub or the wheel rim whatever we wish to call it we need it a little bit bigger so we're going to go ahead and manipulate some of these sliders here and we're getting there we're getting really close here that's looking really really close Ah, good enough again this is up to your discretion on which you want to do but for the sake of argument here that's good enough for me but as we look at it here it looks like it's painted on or you know they they ran through muddy slop uh, that's only a couple inches deep uh, in this case probably about three four inches deep and you know at very slow speed and that's it you want some wear. You want something. You don't want it to look as uniform. You want it to look a little bit more realistic. So, what we're going to do with that is we're going to start off by clicking on this rope here that connects the color gradient to the plastic opacity for plastic number two. Right click on that bad boy, go down to utilities, and we're going to do a color composite. Now, what this does, it allows us to blend two different things here so we have our color gradient that's taking care of what or where we see the mud and where we don't well I also want that to affect up top so I'm going to come down here to an act we're using a metal texture here which is kind of weird but it works trust me well you don't really have to trust me but it works so we're going to drag that metal texture down here and I'm going to just drag this rope into background. So you have the color gradient going into source and you have the texture map going into background. Now, you may be looking at it and saying, dude, it looks exactly like it did before. Well, what this color composite selected, you have to come up here to your blend mode and change it from normal to multiply. Now you can change it from you know one thing to another. Uh, you, so you can experiment with it a little bit. Use screen, you know, overlay, play with it. For this case here, it's going to be multiply. And you know, I'm really not digging it. I mean, it looks kind of weird. So what I'm going to do here is I want certain parts to apply and certain parts to not apply based off of this texture so if I hit C well select that texture map hit C you can kind of see where I have a lot of gray going on I mean it's not really black and white same concept as the color gradient I want you know black to be where you can see through it I want white to be completely you know opaque or non-transparent whatever you want to call it and the cat outside the window is driving me nuts I hope you can hear that. And of course now it stops. Okay, whatever. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this rope. I'm going to come down here to utilities and I'm going to do to color to number. Hit C again. All right. Still had no real effect. Well, we have to manipulate it a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and hit C and we have input twos, input froms is what we're mainly going to be looking at here. So we're going to start moving this input from up. Now, as you can see, our blacks are getting awfully black, which is what we want. We want to, it's basically pushing the contrast in both directions. So our blacks are really black and our whites are really white. We don't want much gray in between so input from kind of turns that blacks up input to we start dragging that off to the left here is jacking the white up so for the sake of oh there it goes again <laughs> uh. 
Oh dear, that cat just I don't know what would happen if that cat ever, you know, disappeared. Any hooser. We have a very black black and a very white white. We're gonna go ahead and hit C. And now you can see where it's kind of roughing up that surface a little bit. It's giving us some variation. It's making it look a little bit more realistic. And you, you don't have to use the metal material. You can actually use other, or I should say, that metal texture. You can use other textures to get a different feel for it. This is just something that I wanted to use. I mean, there's a whole bunch of maps, there's a whole bunch of textures out there on the internet. Uh, you know, I mean, you could pick a color map here. You know what, for the sake of argument here, I'm just going to pick, all right. So we're just going to go ahead and use galvanized here. And it, you can see it, I mean, it's a little bit chunkla and that's because of scales and whatnot. But you, what I'm getting at is you don't have to use this metal material, you could use other ones. Now, as you can see, I mean, it's kind of a little too on the nose, um, at least for my liking. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually manipulate this output to. I'm going to pull it down a little bit or to the left. And actually, if I hit C, you can kind of see what's going on here. It's dulling that white out a little bit. So now it's it's a little bit more, it's a little bit lighter. It's not on the nose, it's a, it's a little bit less obvious. And now obviously, you know, my texture has to be scaled down here. So we're gonna go to like 0.65, because uh, it was too much. I mean, the bump height was actually not too bad. We're gonna turn that down to like mm, four seven. Let that go ahead and play through or I should say sample through. All right, we got about 12 samples now. It's actually not too bad looking. Um, the lighting is still set to, I mean, this is all still set to performance mode. It's going to change, obviously, uh, whenever I change lighting back to a more simulated lighting. But this will get you in the ballpark. That's all I'm trying to do here. If you're looking, this is what you need. Okay, you have your, your main tire material here. You have your plastic node, your texture node. Your noise texture is going into the bump for your plastic up top, which is going into surface. Then you have this plastic here going into label. You have your mud, dirt, dust texture going into diffuse you have a duplicate of that going into bump that allows you to make it look a little bit more caked on not as flat it gives it a little bit more depth you have your color composite going into opacity don't forget to change the blend mode to multiply you have a color gradient going into source for the color composite keep those you know the black and the white relatively close together make sure your gradient type is set to cylindrical and you're gonna have to move your texture around to get it to where you want it and then you have your color to number going into background with your in this case metal material or your metal metal texture map going into the input and then again just play with these settings until you get something that looks like what you want that's about all I have for this video. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, drop them in the comment box below. By all means, I will try and go through them and answer any questions that you may have. I am well aware that, you know, there are times where people go through tutorials and it's just not working the way, you know, the person on the other side of the screen is actually relaying. You know, it works easy for them. It may not work so easy for you. If you encounter that, by all means, drop it in the comments. I'll try and help you out. If you want to see more key shot tutorials, you know, more information, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know that's what you want. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.